Hey, this is David at Tamizium Extractors. I'm about to set this uh, TE12000 up to run 12 pounds or 8 pounds of uh, catnip. Um, it's for a customer. And uh, I thought I'd go over this process to show you guys how this system works. This is a lot, of, I get a lot of questions about how to what kind of filtration system we use and to be honest you need what I call a traversing filter which is basically just some steel wool that's been unraveled or unrolled and then laid beside another piece and then another piece is laid across the top of that like so and then another one and then once you've got about three layers of that you compress all this into a circle that will fit inside of the diameter of that column. And that goes on top of your particulate matter filter. And what this allows you to do is allows you to catch the particles that would normally clog up your filter and stop them from even making it to the filtering process as they traverse through the fibers in this steel wool. The steel wool has already been pre-cleaned. Um, steel wool usually has some machining oil or something to keep it from rusting on it So you have to clean it out before you use it unless you're making a non-consumable <clears throat> so We got about eight bags of uh, one pound eight one pound bags of Catnip into this if it was finely ground I could get about 10 or 12 uh, pounds in the column, but um, They ran out of the finely ground material. and I didn't feel like grinding it any further so this is going to go on top of the extractor tank. This extractor tank has a wafer valve on the top of it so that when you take the column off, the extractor tank vapors inside are not exposed to the air. Um, normally you recover 100% of the solvent anyway and you have zero PSI when you open it up. And um, there's a, there's a, you can, it's probably pulling a vacuum more than it's blowing pressure out. But um, <clears throat> the fact of the matter is there's no pressure in the tank. So this is just an extra safety precaution. It's not to hold pressure or anything, but it, it can hold the pressure in the tank. So I'm going to put this together and put the lid on, and then I'm going to put that up there and hook it all up so that we can start our extraction. Well, one more thing before I get started. We always put a couple of pieces of steel wool right on top of this. And the reason being is whenever this lid or whenever the valve is opened up and the liquid starts to rush into the column it can agitate this <clears throat> as soon as it hydraulically fills all that settles down but um, we want to decrease the amount of um, particulate plant matter that's circulating around on the top to prevent it from getting into the lines in the ball valves so there's several ways to do that this is just the way that we choose to do it you could also get a plate that same plate is on the bottom and put it on the top but you're still gonna want to put something in there that keeps the uh, plant material at bay a uh, word of caution when you're putting this system on the lid onto the column on the automation system there's a temperature probe that protrudes into the plant material and then this is your solvent recovery outlet. So that's got to be on the same side as your solvent recovery tank. You can orientate the lid you know, however you want, but you got to make sure that's on there properly. Otherwise, you have to take it back off and, you know, swap the lid around. Okay, so the bolts are nice and snug. And what you're trying to do is prevent any gap from being between these two parts. When the bolts tighten down, you'll feel a definite stop, and you'll know that the two parts have mated together. Then you just snug up the bolt. There's a torquing sequence, but it really doesn't matter because once you get this up on the extractor tank, because you resealed this lid onto this column, you're going to have to pressure check it anyway. So once you bring it up to pressure and you discover there's a leak, you can always just tighten it up then or remount the lid, <coughs> but you... You're not going to have that problem. It's pretty cut and dry. Okay, so the columns attached to the extractor tank again. Put all the lines back on. 
the lines look a little intimidating but it's really pretty simple there's just there's five lines there's this line it sends the solvent through the column of plant material it goes down in here and then there's your recovery line which recovers from the top of this tank and the top of the column and they join together at this T and then go into the recovery tank where they're being recovered and then there's this line it goes from here over into the recovery tank as well because you're going to recover the solvent from your sucker tank and then there's this line which drains your extract into your sucker tank so that you can access your extract in a safer manner and a tank that's portable that you can pick up and put under a vent hood and you know you can separate the last phase of recovery from your extraction process so you can break your system down sooner and then there's this last line here and this is a line that's got a siphon tube on it that goes to the bottom of the tank and it draws the liquid out on this two tank system and puts it back into this tank and all this is automated so i mean all you got to do is put the heat on this tank a mild amount of heat just to create some pressure and the solvent will move from this tank back over to the tank that it started from so long as this is a lower temperature than the one that's sending it so now you're set up and you're ready to pressure check this tank and your column because those are, those are the two tanks that you opened up and uh, accessed your extract and refilled your column one thing to mention is when you're taking the lines off if you need to um, i just did it so that i could show how they were put back on but the um, the valves need to be opened back up on the manual valves so that when you start your process with the automation system you know it'll it'll be able to run and control itself so there's there's three or four valves that need to be opened up to start the automation process which is over here so we're we want a pressure test so we go into the pressure test screen and we can't pressure test this one because it's telling us that it has solvent in it apparently you don't need to pressure test that one again because it's already been pressure tested nobody's ever opened it up again but the ones we do want to pressure test are this tank and this tank so we'll select those tanks and seal them and then we'll manually put air in them because we feel that a manual pressure test where you're involved is a safer process and once those check out, then the automation system can commence. So the way that you're going to do this is you're going to touch the valves that you want to close. This can be automated as well, but like I said, we feel that it would be best if you have a manual intervention here. And once the tanks that you're trying to pressure test are sealed, then you'll air them up to 100 PSI, which is our mock pressure. And then because we're only using butane it's in this particular extraction, it's a mop pressure of 100. So this tank will be sealed and then the pressure will go up to 100 PSI on the rear. And the same thing over here. And then once you get it to pressure, you start the test. And then after a spe specified amount of time that's set by the automation system, um, if it doesn't notice a pressure drop and this thing's accurate to a hundredth of a PSI, and it it checks checks it on an algorithm factoring in temperature change because when you air up a tank with hot air it cools down and the pressure contracts so it factors all that in and then once it gets a straight linear line then it it notifies you that after a given after a specified time that the pressure test has passed and it'll tell you that it's passed so it only takes about five minutes on these two small tanks Something I wanted to show you guys is I just created a, a, a specific recipe for this uh, plant genus species, uh, Nepeta cataria, for a specific, um, you know, product for this customer. I, I didn't want to fill in all the data for, because I'm using the same genus species for another customer for another type product. And I didn't want to fill in all this data all over again, so I, I retrieved it from my recipe list. And uh, it's showing me that, you know, to verify that this is it. And then once I hit accept, it'll populate all these uh, boxes with the same, uh, same 
thing. So I'll, I'll just come in here and update this to the new recipe. And uh, this one is for something else. So we'll call this, uh, yeah, we'll just call it C. So <clears throat> now I've got two recipes and it saved me a lot of time. So now when I go back to my start at new extraction and it asks me for an extraction ID number, I can just give it a number one. And then when it asks me for my recipe number, I know that I, I want to choose number nine. And then that'll load that recipe for me. And then uh, my initials. And so I want a full automatic extraction. So load the recipe. It's going to tell me everything that I, I need to know. I made a little mistake. I forgot to hit save. So I've got to do that all over again. So copy data. We'll just start from the beginning. Uh, copy data from another recipe. Number eight. Populates. Go up here. So we'll call it Nepeta Kateria and space and we'll call it C. And now you have to hit this save button. Oh, there's something that it's wanting. Items marked with asterisk. Oops, solvent recipe. So we'll say load number one. Now it's ready to save. 